Welcome to the show, sports fans. This is the Treasure Valley PrepCast on IdahoSports.com. That's right. Welcome in another edition of the Treasure Valley PrepCast on IdahoSports.com. Coming at you on Wednesday, September 20th in the year 2023. My name is Brandon Bainey. We are joined by our Treasure Valley expert, Logan Green, wearing his Coal Valley Chargers yeah. basketball hoodie today. What's up, Logan? I know it's uh, today, this morning when I took my kids to school, it was like, I can finally wear a sweatshirt. I've been waiting for this. I've been, uh, you know. My wife's been waiting to put up the the fall decorations, and it's like you can't do it when it's ninety five degrees. But I do enjoy my. We've said this many times uh, that you know I'm a sucker for gear from schools, and Coal Valley gave us these. These are awesome. And you know what? I was just thinking. I I bought a Ridgeview shirt like a year ago, and the Will Kingsbury has it, and he never gave it to me. So I need to go raid the Kingsbury home for my Ridgeview shirt so that I can support them. But if anybody has your school store open, like I, Orofino always posts theirs on their Facebook page. And I need to go to Orofino just to get their shirt, their, their shirt. That's the best. That's the best logo in the state. I'm going to, I'm going to go with it is uh, I really like the Orofinos and new Plymouth. I think theirs is awesome. Anyways, I'm talking way too much about people's, logos and gears but hey send me your store link and i'll buy something from your store definitely hey real quick and then on orofino and then we'll dive into treasure valley stuff um have you have you ever been to their uh gym where they play volleyball and basketball or at least seen it no i have not done anything at orofino so so orofino of course their their logo is the little uh, maniac guy with the crazy hair and the in the Mm -hmm. hospital gown um in the basketball gym on the wall it's it's the maniac guy but he's also like breaking out there's like um they painted (laughs) some of the brick they made they painted some of the bricks to make it look like he's like busting out of a wall (laughs) it's pretty cool actually he's 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 breaking out he's free (laughs) yeah exactly so it's yeah pretty cool but uh ironically enough cole valley christian in football this is going to be a football heavy episode because there was just so many exciting close compelling games um, ironically enough, Cole Valley Christian was not involved in a close, compelling uh, game this past week. Uh, they ended up, uh, let's see, where did they play? I'm trying to see, maybe they had the week I off. I think they right? had the week off, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm rocking the bye week squad. They won the bye week, Brandon. They did. They did win the bye week. But I did want to start in the 2A Western Idaho Conference. Um, there weren't any league games. They were all non-conference battles, but they were all like really good, except for Marcin. Congrats to Marcin getting a 67 nothing win over Parma. Shea mm-hmm. McClellan really turning things around there at, at Marcin. But uh, I think we have to start with this neutral site game that was played on Saturday, Logan, between Melba and North Fremont. These schools are no strangers to each other. They've played in the la- last couple of regular seasons. They yeah. met in the playoffs, uh, I think, two years ago. Um, this game came about because... North Fremont, uh, they're in a conference with Salmon. Well, Salmon didn't have enough players for a varsity team this year, so Salmon had to kind of cancel its varsity season. This left an opening for North Fremont last week, and so Melba also lost a game with Salmon, and so they were kind of talking to each other, and they said, well, hey, why don't we just meet up and play? Uh, Melba said, we can move some things around on our schedule. So they met up on Saturday. They played in Declo. They kind of met in the middle, which is cool. Um, and then this game was like was wild. Uh, Melba led 26-22 at halftime. North Fremont scores early in the third to take a 28-26 lead. And then the game stayed that way up until like three minutes to play, Logan. Uh, actually, two minutes to play. Melba has the ball. It's fourth and three, uh, for, uh, fourth and goal from the three-yard line. Head coach Corey Dickard decides we're going to go for the field goal take a one point lead and we're going to trust our defense to because their defense had played really well. Um, So they line up for the field goal, Logan, it gets blocked. (laughs) North Fremont blocks the kick, but the loose ball sputters into the end zone and Brandon Svetich recovers it for a Melba touchdown. (laughs) Just how they drew it up, right? Yeah. Just like we drew it up in practice. Yeah. Let's get that kick blocked and then we'll recover it. Kick it low, man. Kick it low. (laughs) So they were going for three. They come away with eight because they then run in the two point conversion. And so Melba now leads by six 34, 28. 
And so North Fremont's got the ball. There's still two minutes on the clock. Um, and the Huskies are putting together a drive, but then they fumble. And Melba recovers, and then they run out the clock. And so a 34-28 win. Uh, Melba's been playing two quarterbacks all year, Rylan Frank and, and the six foot seven Cutter Buse. Uh, this is uh, Cash Buse's cousin. And it's worked out really well. They threw for the duo threw for over 300 yards in the win. Um, and then when when they're not playing quarterback, they're playing receivers. So Ryland Frank had 70 yards receiving. Cutter Buse had over 70 yards receiving. A lot of interchangeable parts on this Melba team. Yeah, and this is what I think we've all been waiting for from Melba, right, is the win over a District 5 or a District 6 school. And not just Melba, but anybody here in the 2A WIC, right? Like last year, Nampa Christian – played great. Cole Valley Christian played great. Um, you know, you make it to the playoffs and, and we see it a lot. We see it with one AD one, right. Where our teams over here look great in the regular season. And then they go over there or a team from over there comes here and then, and then they get beat. Right. And this is it. Like North Fremont is always, they are always going to be in the semifinals. It seems like somebody is having to play in a blizzard in Ashton to go to a state championship. It's that's if you want to play in the state championship, you got to win a game in Ashton in the blizzard. That's like, it seems like first has done it for like the last four years that somehow they win that game. And now all of a sudden Melba wins it right now. If Melba runs the table, you know, where do they stack up in these, these rankings that'll come out at the end of the year, they finally got that big win. And that's what we have been waiting for, for them. We can see they compete two A seems maybe, a little more open at the top. First doesn't seem like they've been where they were the last few years. Uh, Bear Lake is not where they were the past, past few years. Obviously, Declo's still good. Westside's still good. But now, all of a sudden, I think it's Melba that's next in that conversation with those top two. No longer is it, can Melba beat North Fremont? Can Melba take care of Bear Lake? Can Melba do anything with Firth? It's, they beat North Fremont. Now it's time to talk about those big two that are at the top, and can Melba hang with them? And why not? Yeah, I vote in the uh, statewide media poll every week. Uh, since the start, North Fremont has been my number one team in the poll. And so uh, I, I still think pretty highly of North Fremont, but obviously Melba was a team I did not have on my radar. And uh, I'm very sorry, Mustangs Nation, never Jeez, again. Shame they, on you. They, they travel to Vail, uh, Oregon, for a non-conference game this uh, Saturday. And then they get into conference play right off the bat with Cole Valley Christian, um, and their, their league schedule is sandwiched with the other two big contenders, Cole Valley Christian, uh, to start on Friday the 29th, and then at Napa Christian in the regular season finale on October 20th. And so the the three at the top, and maybe even New Plymouth, we're going to talk about them next. Uh, this is a really interesting conference for sure. But let, let's talk about yeah. the Grims. New, well, oh, go ahead, Logan. Brandon, real quick. I mean, Max Preps is already, st- again, these rankings are not going to be what they are <laughs> at the final. Again, that's going to cause lots of. Um, heartburn and indigestion talking about that going forward but right now Melba sits at three Melba sits at three and so that that gets you and and North Fremont now is at four and I'm not sure if these have been updated for this week's games I never no one ever knows what goes on behind the scenes there um because half the time it's not correct but um right now they sit at three again because some teams maybe not put in all their stuff and all blah 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 but that would be a big win for them, right? To be at three instead of four, where you are, you know, four or five, I'll say. But North Fremont is four. And so see how that shakes out. You know, I would expect it to be very similar going through the rest of the year. But um, still tons of really good teams, like you're mentioning, like New Plymouth, uh, Nampa Christian left on the schedule here for Melba. Yeah, and the IdahoSports.com power rankings are not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but just for fun, uh, Melba is second in in the IdahoSports.com power rankings. Uh, Marcin is third, which, which again, you know, we could probably tweak the formula a little bit because Marcin hasn't played as rigorous a schedule as Melba, um, but so we got to figure out some sort of strength of schedule component there, but uh, Melba is two, so I don't know, just fun talk anyways. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let's talk about New Plymouth. They were playing Grangeville in a in a true two A non conference battle. Final score fifty two to forty nine in favor of the Pilgrims. Um, I'm not sure how all of the scoring transpired. Obviously, it seems like it was a back and forth game. Uh, I do have the final stats from New Plymouth though. 
Uh, Colton Freights, 402 yards passing, three touchdowns. Peyton Travis rushes for 103 yards and three touchdowns. Freights gets a rushing touchdown. Derek Walker and Heath Shesky both catch eight passes. Walker had 190 yards and a touchdown. Shesky had 153 yards and two scores. New Plymouth is three and one under first year coach Tony Cade. And I guess we'll start to find out as we get into conference play, you know, can the Pilgrims sustain this level? Yeah, I think that's always the question, right? Is you've come out, you've played well, but so far, I mean, Grangeville is typically a state tournament qualifier from up north. Um, and man, putting up a ton of points was New Plymouth. They've looked good so far. Um, it's been a while since we've seen New Plymouth in the state football tournament, um, at least a couple of years. Um, it would be nice to see them back in it, you know, and, and you know, it's not going to be easy for Melville. We just spent all this time talking about them because Tampa Christian, or excuse me, New Plymouth, is going to come out and score points, right? They're going to put points on the board and Melville's going to have to stop it. They're going to have to score themselves. And so kudos to New Plymouth and what they've been able to do so far here to start the season. Yeah, New Plymouth is... Uh scoring on average 38 and a half yeah. points per game, but, but they're allowing 27. So that's why it, can they keep up this high wire act um, as they get into conference play, I think will be the interesting part there. Um, so we'll see uh, also from the two AWIC Napa Christian played up a level uh, against Fruitland. This is a team that you got to see with your own eyes, Logan. We've had them a couple of times on IdahoSports.com this year. Um, 27, 21, the final, the Trojans get the win over the Grizzlies. The game was tied at, at 21, 21 late into the fourth quarter. Uh, Fruitland was down 21, 14, but their freshman quarterback, Titus Vidlak runs in a nine yard touchdown games tied 21. All Napa Christian then gets the ball and they go on this lengthy time consuming drive, but they get down to the goal line and they turn the ball over on downs. They go for it on fourth and goal from like the two turning over on downs. So Fruitland takes over. And what's the danger here, Logan? Anytime you get a goal line stop on downs, you have to be aware of the potential of giving up a yeah. safety. It's exactly what happened. Vidlak gets sacked in the end zone and fumbles. Not only did Napa Christian get a safety, they got a touchdown. Addison Taylor recovers the fumble in the end zone for the touchdown. And so just like that, you go from turning the ball over on downs at the goal line to getting a strip sack fumble recovery for the uh, what ended up being the game winning touchdown. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Namp, or excuse me, Fruitland, if you look on their side, they have some, had some heartbreaking losses. Go back to the battle in Boise. They were right there. I know it looks like a two-score game, but one of those was a heave of an interception with no time left that got run back. You know, they 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 probably think they should have won that game, and I can't disagree with them there. They were right there. Um, and then to lose in that sort of fashion where you, you think you've got it, right? You make a big stop on defense. Um, and then you just can't get it done the other way and end up losing that way. So tough for Fruitland on their side, but Nampa Christian, that's a big win, right? Over a 3A school. Um, that can only help. Again, we talk about those rankings at the end of the year. There's going to be six at large bids up for grabs in the 2A. And it's always, it seems to always go to like a two and five Malad, right? Or something like that over in Eastern Idaho because they quote play better teams. Um, but having a big win over a 3A school can only be helpful for Nampa Christian in well, the whole the, conference, for that matter. Yeah, the problem is, though, is Nampa Christian now needs Fruitland to start bankrolling some wins because Fruitland is now 0-4, and, and like you said, uh, they could easily be 2-2. Two and two. Um, it, Yeah. But, it, you know, it, if you beat an 0-6, 3A team, that really doesn't do right, much no, for your doesn't. Max Express rankings. So it's, it's hard. That's why I think, you know, we talked about this in the off season, but having that human component, I think yes. puts some context. Even if yeah. it's just like a human that, you know, at the end of the day, like, is that six, that large team going to win? No. And that's what we talked about last week with some, um, some schools, but just having a, a human that can say, you know, no, this is a little different than what this computer is saying. Just like you were saying with, with like Marsing, right. Um, you know, maybe, Maybe we need to look somewhere else if they've only beaten, you know, you, NCAA tournament, right? Um, a team from the Northeastern Conference, uh, Niagara, goes 22-3 and three and doesn't get an at-large bid because all their games are played against teams from the, you know, the MAC and the MEAC and stuff like that. It's different, right? It's different. 
Um, so they really need, like you said, they need Fruitland to start rolling quickly. And Fruitland's got it doesn't get any easier for them. <laughs> no, know, they've they've got they've got McCall Donnelly and Parma, um, but then Payette, Homedale, and Weezer. Um, that's not an easy way to finish up your season. And and I will tell you, so uh uh geez, uh <laughs> Fruitland? <laughs> no, 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 uh Napa Christian, sorry. Napa Christian plays Coal Valley Christian this week, which will be big game, obviously. But Fruitland, you mentioned it. They're hosting McCall Donnelly. This is the game, Logan, that I think decides that third and final playoff spot. I think McCall Donnelly is a very good team, and people are sleeping on them. They've already beaten Timberlake this year. Um, and so I like the van and again. Grizz Nation. If I'm wrong, I'll come back and wear it. I love to, but I'm picking the Vandals to get that third and final playoff spot. Um, but this is the game that we're going to look back and go, yep, that decided that third bid. Yeah, because McCall Donnelly so far has taken out Wood River convincingly. They yeah. beat Nampa Christian by a score, and then they beat Timberlake. And like you said, that Timberlake team's no no slouch. Um, and they took care of business there against them. Um Man, it's tough because Wood River is a, not, you know, not the Wood River of old, right? They made it to state last year. They beat South Fremont in the opener. Um, I think that McCall Donnelly team is really good. I, I kind of like where you're going with that, Brandon. Um, but we'll eat all the crow in the world if, <laughs> if, if we're wrong. Yes, a, a big game looms there between Fruitland and McCall Donnelly this Friday. Um, okay, speaking of the 3A, uh, Snake River Valley Conference, Homedale had a neutral site game with Sandpoint. They met on Saturday, Logan, in Hermiston, Oregon. Uh, you know, another meet-in-the-middle game. This is the third year in a row that these two have played. They had split the, the two previous meetings, um, and this time Homedale gets a wild win, 44-35. to Basically, Homedale built up a 14-0 lead early, and that allowed them to kind of trade blows with Sandpoint the rest of the way. Dylan Fine is uh, a strong contender at this point, I would say, for the 3A player of the year in football. 204 yards rushing with four touchdowns. He also completed 14 of 21 passes for 228 yards and two scores. Um, and this Homedale defense is really good. Brock Walker, 15 total tackles in the win. And this is a good Sandpoint team that they just beat. Yeah, and Sandpoint's been one of the top five teams in the state, not this year in 4A, but the last couple of years. And Homedale just continues to roll. I mean, are we set up setting ourselves up again? I think Weezer is going to have something to say about uh, another Sugar Salem Homedale state championship as usual. Um, but man, it, it could we could be on a collision course again uh, to see those two just Homedale rolling through their season. Um, I mean, they've got Parma Payette the next couple of weeks. Um, and then they fit, they've got Weezer. And so that, that, that game right there on October 6th, will probably be the one that decides who wins the three ASRB like usual, <laughs> like usual. Yeah. That's uh, always how it seems to go. Okay. Let's go to the four a Southern Idaho conference where uh, this wasn't uh, a close game necessarily, but an impactful one. Skyview knocks off Emmett. 35 to seven. Um, the fact that Skyview won doesn't surprise me, Logan. The the margin of victory yes. kind of opened my eyes a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Skyview, their only losses right now are to CUNA, a 5A school, and Middleton, a 5A school, right? So they've, they've only lost to two 5A schools and been able to take care of business otherwise. And like you said, not surprising that they won. Um, you know, you've got when you got Cash Buse back there as quarterback, you're gonna win, you're gonna win some games, right? Uh, but to 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 beat them like this, I mean Emmett Emmett had won some big games, right? They beat Fruitland, they beat uh, Blackfoot on the road. Um, I know those teams don't have any wins combined between the two of them, but to to go in in a big environment at Boise State and then to go on the road, have your quarterback out to just find a way to win, and then they went and they beat Lake City on the road, right? So Emmett beating a five A school, and then Skyview just uh, beat them down. So now I think you got to look and say. Maybe I think it's Skyview, right? And Bishop Kelly, those top two spots. And the last few years, it's been Bishop Kelly and everybody else. But maybe now Skyview gets in this conversation that maybe they can compete with Bishop Kelly. Uh, so we'll have to see when those two obviously play. But another player, I think 4A might be a little more um, open than usual. I think obviously Pocatello's very, very good. Um, Hillcrest beat skyline last week so maybe that that's where i see a little bit of a opening that those two are battling it out but 
chance maybe for a team to make a little bit of a run over here, adding in Skyview. Yeah, so Skyview's two and zero in league play, and they the 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 problem with them had been they've got this explosive offense with Cash Buse, right? And Buse had 106 yards and two touchdowns, throwing 107 yards rushing in the win. Mason Cron caught both touchdowns and 113 yards receiving. Um, the the thing with Skyview was offense good, defense also susceptible to giving up lots of points. But the last two weeks, Logan, as conference yeah. play has started, a 45 nothing win over Valley View. 35-7 win over Emmett. They're at Columbia this Friday before their annual rivalry game with Nampa. And I think this is all building up to, I love it when the schedule works out this way. It does. Regular, regular season finale, Friday, October 20th, Skyview at Bishop Kelly. Get your popcorn ready. And from what we've seen, again, you know, we can compare scores all day and it doesn't always translate to what happens on the field, right? But 80-0 to zero has been the last two weeks of scores for Skyview against Valley View and Emmett 80 or 80 to seven, excuse seven. me, not 80, 80 to seven. Um, but they beat Valley View. What is that? 45 to zero. Yeah. And Valley View just beat Columbia. Um, and that's another game we all talk about, but they just beat Columbia. And all of a sudden, you know what? I don't, you know, you look at the schedule and you say for Skyview, you should be good until that Bishop Kelly game. So should be super fun to see how that one shakes out. I mean, those, those could be two undefeated in conference play up until the final week. And I tell you the way that Columbia or excuse me, Skyview has been playing. Um, it's not going to be, it's not going to be one and done for them. I think if the, you know, I, unless you have to play um, Pocatello uh, Hillcrest or skyline in the first round, you know, if you get anybody else, I think you've got a legitimate shot to win that first game and make, make some noise. Because anything can happen once you get in the state tournament. Yeah, let's talk about that Valley View Columbia game. Valley View picks up the twenty-eight to twenty-seven win. Uh, basically, Columbia missed an extra point early, uh, and then they they were down twenty-one thirteen. So Columbia scores in the third quarter. They then go for two to try and tie the game back up, and they do. It's tied twenty-one all. So they overcame that missed extra point. Um, then. Uh, Columbia, or excuse me, uh, Valley View uh, scores again. They're up 28-21. Columbia scores, and but again, they miss another yeah. extra point. Um, and so after they had overcome a missed extra point earlier in the game, they miss another one crucially late. Um, Valley View has a 28-27 lead. And then the Falcons with Coach Briny Robinson, what do they want to do? They want to run the ball. They bred. Uh, bled nearly five minutes off the clock yeah. late in that game. Columbia did get the ball with 107 to play. They had the ball at midfield, uh, and and but Jared Payne throws an interception with 10 seconds to go, and and so Valley View wins by 128-27. Columbia is a handful of plays away from being 4-0. Right. They lost to Canyon Ridge in overtime last week, 40-34. to They lose by one this week. I think this is a game that is devastating to Columbia's playoff chances um, because now you're looking at this is a league that only gets two auto bids this year. Uh, we like BK and Skyview. Um, yeah. we, think, we think Emmett probably gets in at large, but now you're talking about Columbia and Valley View are going to be kind of fighting with each other um, for an at-large bid, and Valley View has got maybe a leg up in the head-to-head. -head. It doesn't always work that way with the max preps rankings, but um, this was a big win for the Falcons. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's huge to get them where they're at. Um, because when you scroll down, right, those max prep rankings, I mean, in it is 12 right now, but Val, I mean, Valley View and Columbia, again, I'm not sure if it's been updated are 18 and 19 respectively. So, um, again, here's one, Brandon, um, those two teams are ranked behind winless Blackfoot. Um, so there's your, maybe a human should be involved here and say, this team hasn't won a game. They shouldn't be, what if they get in? That would be a heck of a story um <laughs> anyways uh you know you got to win those games get those two spots and um valley view is going to climb up you know because of that they're going to be in a better position because of that and um it's a tough break but you go back to the extra point missed i mean it, it cost um meridian and their game against eagle right um 30 it was 36 33 it all you know they missed an extra point they go for two to make it up they don't get it all of a sudden, you know, they they lost two points because of that, and that was the difference. 
You can trade touchdowns all day, but if you can't kick an extra point, it's done, right? You're, you're not going to win the game. If if you go up against a team that can, um, and Skyview, they have a good kicker. Skyview does, and, and they're going to be good because of that. They're going to be in games, and they're going to be able to win games from 30 or 40 yards out, and they're not going to have to worry about that. And if you can't, I mean, that is sometimes what differentiates the winning team and the, the losing team, right, is we don't have that one piece, and you have that piece. And and it just it stinks that sometimes it comes down to that. But you know what? you got to have a kicker. you got to have somebody that can at least boot it through from 10 yards out or 20 yards for that extra point. Um, just to be able to, to stay pace with the team you're playing against and not get behind um, and at bare minimum, right? Um, there's just a lot of schools that, you know, they, they can't even kick a field goal, right? Just, they you know, and that's one thing, right, to know that we have to always score. We can't even <laughs> – we can't be in field goal range. But to not have confidence or to not be able to knock through the extra point is just a whole another piece of the pie there. Yeah, I'll, I'll one up you. Uh, I did a eight man game last week up in North Idaho with the, the Clark Fork Wampus Cats. Mm-hmm. And um, not only did they not kick at all, they they didn't punt the whole game. I guess they didn't have anybody that could punt. At one point, they had like a fourth and 30 from like their own like Jeez. 25 and they went for it. They didn't punt. It was kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, having, having a weapon in the kicking game can be a, a huge difference. Just ask the Highland Rams the last couple yes. of years when they've had yeah. Hershey, right? So, yeah, I mean, and, it, and, it makes a difference. And and you you look ahead to okay, who's got good kickers? Uh, Mountain View has one of the best kickers in the state, in in Martin Connington. So something to keep in you know look out for as we get down the road to the playoffs. But let's go to Mountain View's uh, classification, Class Five A. Let, let's start over in the in the River Division because this is where all the chaos is uh, happening. I feel like um, you've got. Really, uh, everybody, everybody's kind of matched up here right now. Officially, Boise and Eagle are two and oh, Boris two and one, Mountain Views one and one, Cuna and Hawaii are one and two, Napa sits at oh and three. But Napa just pushed Cuna yeah. in a game that we had on IdahoSports.com. Um, basically, Cuna was up 28 to seven in this game, and Napa in the late third and throughout the fourth. Made the comeback. Josh Peterson scores on a 35-yard touchdown run. Um, Dominic Almaraz hits Bryce Wallingford for a 32-yard touchdown pass. And then Peterson scores again on a 10-yard run. Ties it up. Nampus uh, scored 21 unanswered to send the game to overtime. So we go to OT. Cuna's got the ball first. Austin Latimer, who, uh, no surprise, was our Idaho Sports.com player of the game. Uh, he had 151 yards rushing and four touchdowns. That fourth touchdown came in overtime. Uh, Nampa then jumps off sides on the ensuing point after, so it moves from the two to the one. And Cuna coach Jeff Shank says, hey, let's go for Punch two. In. We only need to get a yard. Uh, Latimer runs it in. So now Cuna's up by eight, 36, 28. Now Nampa gets the ball, Logan, and Nampa's got all the momentum here. They score on their first play from overtime. Uh, Peterson scores on a 10 yard run, made it look easy, but now Nampa needs the two point conversion. They, they, they go with an option play Almarez and Peterson Almarez decides to keep it. He's tackled short. It was very well defended by Cuna. And so the cavemen survive in overtime to win 36, 34. What a game though. Yeah. Just wild. Right. And all that went on with that and Nampa coming back and two point again, there it comes down to right. Those, those extra point conversions, whether it's a kick or whether it's a two pointer, right. That, that makes a difference in a game, it makes a difference in a conference game. And man, you know, if Nampa wins that game, you're talking that they're one and two and, and Cuna's 0 and three in, in conference. And it's a big game. And and you mentioned it, the Rivers division is a is a mess. And it's a good mess, right? It's it's well, what is going on here? I you know, I think that we do have some tiers, right? Um that of, of teams that are good, but do we know like where exactly that line is? Because uh, I, I mean, Cuna is that they had a tough loss, um, but like Boise is four and zero. When, when's the last time you could ever say that, right? Boise's four and zero, um, but they have a really tough stretch coming up. Mountain View, um, you know, has lost a couple of games. Uh, Eagle is undefeated. I think Eagle is is the top dog right now. Um, 
but they they they've been pushed in games, right? So a white like again, it's this circular. I think I talked about it last time where so and so beat so and so, and you can go all the way around because Boise beat a Hawaii. Hawaii beat Mountain View. A why he pushed Eagle this week. So maybe Boise is better than we think. You know, I we just won't know until I, and this was something I told you too, Brandon. Right. We know this year the SIC gets seven bids automatically to state. We have no idea where that seventh one's going to come from. We'll figure that out. Um, but how they get the seven, I don't know whether it's a ranking or whatever. Anyways, um, they're going to be seven SIC schools. Let's just pretend they're ranked one through seven. Would not surprise me if the sixth or seventh team ends up playing on the last day of the year. You know, like just the way it has been, um, it's very unpredictable. All the teams have something to offer, um, and and there's the, there's just a lot of teams that can compete and could potentially go on a run and win it. Um, it's deep. It's very deep this year, deeper than I think it has been in the past. It's really fun to watch every week, but when the margins are so thin. Um, it does come down to a lot of times the special teams, which we'll continue to talk about when we get to capital. Um, but yes, uh, Kuna, all they, all that matters is you win and you survive and they do yeah. Eagle played a why he Logan and a why he had already beaten mountain view, uh, which we kind of think is a head. Scr- I think if you look just objectively mountain view <clears throat> seems to be playing the best, most consistent football right now. Eagle of course keeps winning, but every game is a nail biter. It seems like, yeah. um, and, and including this one over Hawaii, he Eagle wins 21, 17. They had to come from behind to, to get the win. Now this game started and, and sent, we'll talk about this with Centennial um, kind of inauspiciously Eagle fumbles, uh, just 20 seconds into the contest, Davis Harson is hit. He fumbles. Uh, Logan House fight recovers for Hawaii. One play later, Matt Irwin finds Ryan Brecky for a 28 yard touchdown. I'm telling you, if you haven't seen Ryan Brecky play, he is a six foot four, six foot five, absolute specimen matchup nightmare out there at wide receiver for Hawaii. He's really fun to watch. Um, and so Hawaii's got a seven nothing lead. They lead 10 7. Hawaii leads 17 14. And then Eagle gets the ball with just over six minutes to play, and they burn the clock with Burnham, Noah Burnham. Uh, they gave him the ball, uh, and he got he got fed on that final drive. Mm. He ends up scoring on a four-yard touchdown run. Eagles got a 21-17 lead. So they got the ball with like 6-10 to play in the game, Logan. By the time Eagle was done scoring, there was only 58 seconds left in Hawaii. He didn't have time to, to mount a comeback. Yeah, just, uh, you know, good finish there once again. And Hawaii, you know, you talk about close games, right? Hawaii lost their second game of the year, both by a score, less than a score, you know, a couple of points um, each time. Um, and 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 Eagle, again, wins a, a squeaker, right? They beat – the only game they've had convincingly won was the CUNA game. And outside of that, everything's also been a one-score game. It, it's just – the smallest little mistake and you go back and you know what, if Harson doesn't fumble on the first drive, does Eagle win by two or three scores? Who knows? You know, who knows, who knows what kind of tempo that changed and changed the entire uh, feel of the game. You, you know, you, you just can't, you can't know, but that just shows you if one thing goes the wrong way, what can happen and, and how that can completely change course of everything. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the foothills division. Oh, and, and we should mention Mountain View beats Bora 42 21. Again, the fact that the Mavericks won doesn't surprise me. Margin of victory does a little bit. I think Bora is still a playoff team. Javon Nelson's a great uh running back. Jacob Detweiler at quarterback, and that offensive line is so good. But uh, margin of victory for Mountain View was surprising, which is why I say I think they're playing the best right now. Just kind of a weird loss to Hawaii, yeah, but they're three and one otherwise, so. Yeah, I mean, you look at Hawaii's schedule, they've got Bora um, on the schedule, and that should be, I think that one might be the deciding game, maybe like who gets a, a spot um, maybe in that seven. I'm not I'm not saying it is going to happen, but it, it potentially could um, change. You know, we, we'll have those crossover games that final week of the season. Maybe that puts you in a more, because if you can play the fourth team from the other division, you're you're set. <laughs> rather, yes. rather than play, you know, the t- we'll talk about the the foothills division, um, but it, it it more than likely it's going to be Meridian or it's going to be Rocky one Meridian two or 
some sort of that. And then Middleton three, more than likely. Um, and then if you can play not one of those three, your chances are really good. So if you can finish in the top three on your side, you got to like where you sit. I mean, you just mentioned it. Let's go to the uh, Foothills division where we think the top three in some order is going to be Rocky Mountain, Meridian, Middleton. I think the four spot has kind of been wrapped up. Timberline's struggling. Um, and we, we had Centennial and Capital play on Friday night, Logan, and Centennial gets a win in double overtime, 33-27. Now, just like Eagle, Centennial, inauspicious start. They fumbled on their first play from scrimmage. And uh, from there, uh, Eagle Eagle kicks a field goal. They lead uh, three nothing. Eagle gets another short field off of a punt. Uh, it's another field goal, and and Capital is thinking like, oh man, I wish we could have converted those into touchdowns instead of field goals. But they're up six nothing. Well, Centennial uh, is punting again in the first half. Brody Call returns a punt, fifty five yards for a touchdown. And so it's 13 to nothing capital. All the points have come on special teams plays so yeah. far, which is kind of interesting. Centennial finally gets on the board. Tate Keddington finds Marcus Connors for a 12 yard touchdown. 13 uh, seven is the score at halftime. Centennial then scores again on a Kennington, uh, Keddington to Connors touchdown. Centennial leads for the first time, 14 13. And then they extend the lead to 21 13 in the fourth after uh, Jordan Kafari runs in a touchdown. But on the ensuing kickoff, Brody Call returns it 99 yards for a touchdown. So Brody Call not only had a punt return for a touchdown, he had a kickoff return for a touchdown. Then A.J. Danaha runs in the two-point conversion. and We're tied 21-all going to overtime, Logan. Uh, what a way for Capital to rally back um, behind the electrifying returning of Brody Call. Yeah, no, awesome way to come back in it, right? You're going to get the – is there a – is there a um a cycle in football, what would it be? A punt return for a touchdown, a kickoff return for a touchdown, and then I don't know what it would be if you had to make the the cycle of football. I get, right? I, I like returning, returning, returning a blocked punt and a blocked field goal. Or maybe. an interception. Maybe add an interception to that. Yeah. Return, um, anyway, yeah, no, great job by uh, Centennial, though, to get the win. Um, and like you said, does that maybe – cement that four again middle they still these teams still have to play middleton we're kind of jumping ahead right saying uh we think they're going to win but i based on what i've seen this year you know i like the vikings to to, to get it done there but um again you don't want to if you can finish fourth instead of fifth again that's a big victory right um and, he, and if you can somehow pull an upset over a team above you then you know even better <laughs> uh, yeah. but a huge win for centennial who has been kind of fighting and clawing to get, you know, get that win, that first win of the season. And then they finally do. So Keelan McCaffrey gets his first victory um, there as the coach for Centennial and comes in double overtime. So it may probably taste a little bit better that way too. Yeah. So how, okay. So how does Centennial get the win? We go to overtime tied 21 all uh, Kafari scores on a five yard touchdown run for Centennial, but uh, extra point. It's a bobbled snap. They try to run it in. They don't get it. 27 21 again special teams looming large centennials lead is at six now capital gets the ball kind of like napa they score on their first play as Braden dudley throws a 10-yard touchdown to marcellus clay and the game side 27 all all capitals got to do is make the extra point logan well centennial blocks it <laughs> sends it to double overtime so now capital gets the ball to start and on their first play from scrimmage again uh, they're looking to go to the end zone, but Daniel Demers comes away with the pick for Centennial, uh, and that sets up the game-winning five-yard touchdown run from Skyler Howard. And so the Patriots, despite having the, the PAT go awry, they come through and block a PAT of their own. Uh, this was a, a wild win for Centennial, like you said. Congrats to Coach Keelan McCaffrey on that first win of the year. And they, I, watching them on film, I've watched a lot of Centennial on film this year, and if you look at just their final scores, it can be a little deceptive, but they have been very competitive in most of their games until like third quarter. And then they start to wear down a little bit, but that Hawaii game, they lost 37 to eight. It was like 14 to eight midway through the third quarter. Um, same with the CUNA game. They lost 20 to nothing at the start of the, the season. Yeah, they were in. So I, this is a centennial team. That's going to fight and compete. And if they can just get a little more depth built up, um, I think they could be pretty good. I mean, they're going to play Rocky Mountain on Thursday. So 
good luck. And uh, with the way these two teams play defense, could be first team to 12 wins <laughs> yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, they got Rocky and Meridian back-to-back. So we're going to see, you know, maybe they've gotten – I'm not maybe. They have gotten better as the year goes along. You know, sometimes new coach, new scheme, new everything, maybe a little adjustment period there. Uh, they're going to get a, sh- a shot at the best here over the next few weeks. Yeah, it's going to be really fun to see. Um, before we turn the page on football, Treasure Valley game night this week uh, will feature. Uh, it's going to be Middleton will play Thunder Ridge. Thunder Ridge, thank you. So, yeah. yeah, it's homecoming for Middleton, so they'll be there. And we also have so for Meridian fans, we will be at Highland for that game. So um, no need to text your friends or anything like that what's the score what's going on i mean you're more than welcome to do that but you can watch it lance taylor will be there he's an awesome broadcaster um should be that one should be really fun that'll give us that'll give us a very good taste of the east versus west where i mean we've seen it a few times but middleton plays thunder ridge i don't i'm not sure if that's going to be a true test thunder ridge is really struggling this year i think that one will you know middleton will probably get it done there on homecoming but uh Meridian going to Highland last year was just a one score game. And so this year, um, again, I, I, I'm high on Highland. I think you are too, Brandon. I think they might be the best 5A team in the state from what we've seen. Um, they just, they've been on a roll. They did play a close game with Pocatello. I think that says more about Pocatello than uh, Highland. Um, I think Pocatello is just also very good. Um, so. <laughs> Hi, I mean, Meridian's got their hands full. This will be a big test for them. Um, of course, you know, Meridian has been a good team the last few years, played for a state championship last year, and this is going to be a big test for the Warriors on the road. Yeah, so we've got uh, Meridian at Highland, uh, Thunder Ridge at Middleton Friday night. Both games kick off 7 o'clock, and then an eight-man game for you on Saturday as Council. Uh, takes on Butte County in a neutral site game at Homedale High School. That'll be Saturday night at five o'clock Mountain Time. So, yeah, little little yeah. eight man for you on Saturday night should be good. Yeah, so, Butte County's coming over here like back to back weeks for yeah. uh, meet in the middle. This one's more meet closer to Council, but uh, the next week Kendrick and Butte County, and I've seen both teams play this year. That might be, like, I mean, should be good. Um, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm sure you talk, you'll talk about that on your eight man one, but yeah, that's going to be a good one for yeah. sure. Um, okay. Well, let's, let's stay with council. Let's talk a little volleyball, Logan, the council lumberjacks have been on fire lately. Um, of course, horseshoe bend is always the team we think about in one AD two volleyball. And it kind of sucks that councils in the same conference as them, but, uh, council is a very, very talented volleyball team. I mean, the girls' basketball team just won the state championship, right, last year. Like, they've got the athletes there that can get it done. Maybe not all the same pieces that were a part of that, but the team knows how to win. And they went over to this Mountain View tournament this past week, and that's what they did. They they won their silver bracket, as they call it. And, and you know, it, it's tough to do that after you, you may start off with a loss, which they did, but then they come back and get it done and knock off some good teams along the way to that championship. Yeah, the uh, the annual Idaho Classic. It's hosted by Mountain View every year. It's basically uh, if you if you're a three A, two A, or one A volleyball program with any semblance of hey, we're going to be good this year, you co- you come to the Idaho Classic, and so it is it is top notch competition. Um, Council ends up rattling off wins over. I had the info here on my. Yes, yeah, so they lost to Ambrose to start, and they beat Hagerman. And then lost to Nampa Christian. They beat Victory Charter, and then they beat 3A Homedale, and then they beat Murtaugh in the championship game. So and and Homedale and Murtaugh are good. Yeah, I mean, and, and they lost the first set to both of those teams. They lost to Homedale 23-25, so right down to the wire. And they lost to Murtaugh 25-20, and then they come back and win both. How about this for the Murtaugh one? They beat Murtaugh 25-21 in that second set. And then 15 13 in the final one. So they really squeaked it out there towards the end and played a, a close match there. But yeah, beating a 3 A team in Homedale and then knocking off Murtaugh, a great way to finish up that tournament there for Council. Yeah, this long pin conference in general, of course, Horseshoe Bend is 7 0 overall, 5 0 in league. Um, but then you've got Council 
and Tri Valley are both three and one. They'll meet for the first time next week. Uh, Garden Valley is two and three. Garden Valley just lost to Council uh, on Monday night. So Garden Valley's three losses are to Horseshoe Bend, Tri Valley, and Council. I, w- I watched that match, Logan, and Council um, defended their home floor well, but Garden Valley comes out and wins the first set. And so I think that was a wake up call to Coach Paula Tucker and, and the Lumberjacks. And yeah. hey, let's focus in. But you know what? Even though Council won the next three sets and got the three to one win, it was hard fought. Uh, Garden Valley wouldn't go away. Council would try to bury him. Garden Valley would go on a run. Um, it was a hotly contested match. There's a lot of good volleyball teams in the long pin, and two are going to be stuck at home yeah. uh, for the state tournament. Yeah, when you've got four of the best teams, right? Horseshoe Bend is obviously who they are, and then Tri Valley is good, and they won a championship a couple years ago. And then you could be looking at is it Council and Garden Valley that are at home when they might be. <laughs> <laughs> one through four in the state potentially and you know it, it's tough to say that now but man what council did at this tournament shows me that they did deserve a spot you know in that conversation yeah it's going to be really interesting and then uh, one last volleyball note uh at the other end skyview our our 4a juggernaut they're traveling down to las vegas this weekend logan for the durango fall classic this is kind of like the premier tournament yeah. in the west um and so good luck lady hawks down there competing representing idaho yeah, they might be one of the most successful programs of anything in the state, right? You, you think of good teams that are, you know, quote, uh, dynasties or whatever it is, but I don't think anybody has the quite reputation that Skyview Volleyball has. Like, they, they've they played in huge tournaments and done well in huge tournaments, and they are, they are just big time. They are legit. They are, I think, anybody, if your program can be where that Skyview Volleyball team is, um, where their program is, then you're in fantastic shape. Uh, they are just rolling. Yeah. Uh, Skyview uh, was one of the subjects of this week's Keeping Up With The Kill. It's our weekly uh, volleyball column that our volleyball analyst, Lindsay Togiai Afuk, writes for us. She was a former player at Century and in college in Montana and knows the game really well. Um, and so that's every uh, Monday we publish that, Keeping Up With The Kill. And it's kind of just a couple of you know interesting volleyball things going on, but it's really worth your time. Uh, so Skyview's got two Bauer sisters playing at BYU already Mm -hmm. um, in Whitney and Eden. Alex Bauer is a senior on this year's Skyview team. She's headed to BYU next year. And then there's another Bauer this year. Freshman Lizzie Bauer is on the team. So there's no end to the Bauer family dynasty with Skyview volleyball. No, and, and, and BYU and women's volleyball, just for reference is just number 10 in the nation. So, um, no big deal. You're not going to a school that is very good. And, you know, they're 11 and one this year. And, you know, the teams above them are teams that you hear of all the time, you know, being involved in just about everything, but and no joke to go play volleyball for BYU. So that just kind of shows you if BYU is going and saying, Hey, we're just going to take these kids, these family members from Skyview, you know, that that's how good they are. This is a team that's turning out not division one talent, but top 10 division one talent that's just a it's a great uh it's a great feeder right and they're they're just a really good team program yeah. i'll say not team program program yes um they are uh yeah premier program for sure good luck this weekend down in vegas all right we went long on this week's show but man there was so much good action to talk about sometimes we have to go into overtime like several of our teams yeah, did. they went so we'll go we'll go too <laughs> that's right uh enjoy the games this weekend everybody again football for you friday night middleton hosting thunder ridge meridian at highland both at seven o'clock and then saturday eight-man football council taking on butte county at five o'clock so uh, until then for logan green i'm brandon bainey and we'll see you next time on the treasure valley prep cast on idahosports.com <laughs>